French government will push through its landmark and unpopular pension reforms without a vote by MPs. For weeks now, unions have led protests against the bill that would raise the French retirement age to 64. Indeed, about two-thirds of French people are opposed to the plans. But this afternoon, the Prime Minister, Elizabeth Bourne, said the government doesn't have the numbers it needs to pass the vote in Parliament, so it will force through the legislation anyway. Take a listen. Today, we are faced with uncertainty. That hinges on a few votes. We cannot take the risk of 175 hours of parliamentary debate collapsing. On the basis of Article 49.3 of the Constitution, I engage the responsibility of my government on the pension reform bill. Well, already then, significant anger in Parliament following uh, that statement by Elizabeth Bourne. Just have a listen to the spontaneous reaction by MPs a short while ago. Madame, s'il vous plaît. Quite a moment there in the National Assembly this afternoon. MPs singing the national anthem. And not long afterwards, Marine Le Pen, the leader of the far-right National Rally Party, announcing that she will be filing a motion of no confidence in the government in response to its plans to force through this legislation. Let's go live then to the National Assembly. Claire Pacalin is there. She's been watching all of this drama unfold today. Claire, just bring us up to speed. Marine Le Pen saying a motion of no confidence is to be filed. How big of a deal is that? Well, I've just been speaking to some members of parliament trying to get a picture of what things are going to look like over the next few days. Marine Le Pen, as we said, is planning to file a motion of no confidence, but she's not the only one. Left-wing MPs will be doing the same, and I understand that early next week, whichever motion of no confidence has the most backers, well, that will be the one that, that will actually be debated on in parliament. This is a risky time for Elizabeth Bourne, the French Prime Minister. It's a risky position she has found herself in. Many opposition members of Parliament will be seeing this 49.3 mechanism, the use of it, as a provocation. It's fired them up. It really has. We are, though, in a similar position as we were before. It's those right-wing Les Républicains party members who are being courted now. It's their votes who count. It's worth remembering that their presidential candidate last year, Valérie Pécresse, she campaigned to raise the retirement age. But this time round, some of them planned to back the reform and others just felt that they couldn't back Emmanuel Macron and, their, and his government. Some of them joined criticism from the left wing, saying that the bill was unfair. But it's their votes. It could come down to a hand, handful of votes. It's their votes which will be courted over the next few days ahead of that likely motion of no confidence next week. And Claire, take us then to next week, if you can. The vote of confidence happens. Let's assume the government loses the vote. What happens then? Well, the person who's really in the firing line is Elizabeth Bourne, the Prime Minister. When she came in last year, this really was the big reform that she needed to get enough votes for in Parliament. And she hasn't managed to do that. She wasn't able to bring enough of those right-wing Les Républicains party members on board. So really, the 49.3 mechanism for her feels like a bit of a failure. Um, that said, there's also the trade unions. They're not backing away easily either. The dustbin collectors in Paris are going to continue their strike until next Monday at least. And we know that the trade unions will really see the 49.3 mechanism as a trigger for more strikes, more actions, which they haven't yet specified, but I'm sure we'll find out very, very soon. More actions pretty much means more disruption here in France. Claire Pacalin live at the National Assembly. Thank you very much indeed.